Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm live earlier than I was planning on to. <laughs> so, gonna continue with Seduce Me the Otome, I think that's how you're actually supposed to pronounce it. Uh, hi, how are you? Uh, so yeah, I think it's, it's either Otome or Otome. I. Blah, blah. Either way, I do not know. <laughs> That's good. So this time we're going to go through Eric's route. Then we have Damien, Naomi. <laughs> yeah, either way. <laughs> so after we do Eric's route, we have Damien, Suzu, Naomi, and Andrew's route. And then we have sis, sis, blah, 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 words. Seduce me to the Demon War, which we're going to be playing through, which I'm kind of excited about, which I will be playing through that game blind. We have no idea what this, how much of this, what the storyline really is for that. <laughs> so yeah, that will be interesting. That's when I saw them. And again, we're going to be starting each of these boys' routes up to when we first meet them. Like I did with the others for Jane, Sam, and Matthew. Lying on the floor was a group of men. They all were un all they all were they all were unconscious, but there was no explanation as to why they were there in the first place. I dropped my bags as I let the door close on its own behind me. H huh? Who the heck are these guys and why are they here? What's going on? Some of them had opened wounds, the blood was staining the floor, and the scent was intermingling with the air. I couldn't tell but feel bad for them instinct instinct instinctively, but nonetheless Never the blah blah blah. <laughs> Again, words. It, nevertheless, I was shocked and a bit angry at the sudden intrusion. My mind suddenly went from caring and confused to get caring and concerned to confused and demanding answers. Who are you guys? No response. I'll call the police. Still nothing. None of them seemed to be awake to answer or respond to me. It seemed surreal to have random strangers in the house I just moved into. But I wanted answers quickly. That was until Sam came up and kissed us. <laughs> oh god, Sam. Eve, get away from me! Woman, you're going to let me kiss you. I couldn't believe it myself, but within a mere blink of an eye, one of the men went from lying on the floor to being right in front of my face. What was even more odd was the fact that I felt serene and calm about it. Slowly, a desire burnt from my chest, telling me to accept his kiss even when my mind refused. Uh, uh, uh go ahead. Good. Sam, I swear to God. <laughs> As he kissed me, I could feel my body go weak. I didn't know why, but that kiss was draining me from my energy, and yet it was so good, and my heart sang. It was a strange and tingling feeling that danced over every nerve on my body. I could feel streams of intangible energy run up my body into my lips. It felt odd, but at the same time, it felt amazing. Sam, stop it. Mm -hmm. The person kissing me, Sam, was his name, glanced behind him. I said stop. Now. Mm. Fine. <laughs> oh my god, Sam. Finally, he pulled back and I left standing there in a daze. 
What? Huh? I can't tell what was going on. My mind was completely enwrapped by the kiss and my thoughts that melted into the depths of my of my forgotten memory. Please forgive my brother. He's a bit reckless. At least I feel a hell of a lot better than you right now. Because you used your abilities on her. <laughs> yeah, Sam. Sam, you're such a reckless brute. Taking advantage of a beautiful young woman like her. <laughs> Eric, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Sam, I love you, but... You didn't have to force that kiss. Shut that pretty boy mouth of yours before I rip it off your pretty boy face. Sam! <laughs> Jeez, you guys. Can we not fight right now? Not all of us are in the best state. I guess you are right, yeah. Matthew. I agree. Hmm. Hmm. However, as the man got up and started start to blah, 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 started to chat freely, my thoughts began to resemble and I remembered my confusion and anger once again, only to only now multiplied tenfold. What? Huh? Did you say something beautiful? <laughs> Maybe, Eric. What's it to you? And I exploded. What's going on? Why the hell are you all here at my house? Why are you all wounded? Did... Why did you kiss me? Who are you guys? I couldn't tell, but I couldn't tell, but exploding. But after being taken advantage of. And being left in a mush state, my words kept escaped without filter. I definitely scared the men around me, even the man who kissed me. Wait a second, the guy who kissed me. Ouch! What's your problem? What the hell? <laughs> What's your problem? You can't just go around forcing people to kiss you like that. Are, are you some kind of pervert? Pervert? It was only a kiss! And. It might mean nothing to you, but it means a lot to me. What? Was it your first kiss? Ow! Hey! What was that for? He deserved that punch. <clears throat> I know first kisses are the blah 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 blah. I can't speak. I know first kisses are exactly amazing and full of sparkles and, and something out of fairy tale, but I had at least expected it to be more than just something forced. So it was your first kiss. Stop making such a big deal. Oh shit! Did not mean to do that. So it was your first kiss. Stop making such a big deal out of it. He's looking to get punched again. I know I keep saying that, but <laughs> even every when these streams first excuse me. Are you asking to get punched again? Well, what do you want me to do? It's not like I can somehow take it back. No kidding. You should at least apologize. That was so. I can't even pronounce that word. Suffice or whatever. As if to himself, he muttered something under his breath. Why do I always look like the bad guy? Apologies aren't my forte, but I'll try my best. Oh, sweet baby. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. Sorry about what? I'm sorry for kissing you like that. I went too far. He sighed and ran his fingers through his hair. I didn't mean for it to turn out that way. It's just, I act on impulse, okay? It's difficult to control myself and... <sighs> what am I saying? Sam. It's okay, I get what you're trying to say. Thank you for the apology. Yeah, no problem. Anyway, if you try to pull any funny business in the, fu uh, but in the future, just a fair warning. I know Taekwondo. <laughs> Don't me. I think I've figured enough. Time to get back to the main issue. So, what exactly are you all doing in my house, anyway? 
<sighs> Miss, please forgive us in our intrusion. We didn't know this abode belonged to anyone, nor did we have the time to take that into consideration. What do you mean? You don't just barge into people's homes. We wouldn't have had to if we weren't as wounded as we are currently. We just escaped from a deadly fight that could have ended our lives. Oh, I forgot to ask, how's the vibe for their voices? Luckily for us, your home was near and the windows were unlocked, so we quickly came inside. The last time I remembered, there were laws preventing strangers from stepping on private property, although considering the... the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay, good. I can't. Blah, blah, blah. Considering the severity of their wounds, it had to be serious. I guess that explains the wounds, but not, but not. <laughs> Sorry, we <you> heard that. <laughs> but not why he kissed me. He had absolutely no right to do that. Well, lovely flustered lady, it's hard to explain. Truly, Eric. we're not exactly normal. Eric. Normal? What are you guys? Demons or something? Yeah, Incubi. I asked almost joking, jokingly, but the boy seemed to take my question differently. <sighs> Damien. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, something like that. Eh? We're Incubi, miss. Demons who consume and use sexual energy of humans to survive. Hmm. Incubi, the fabled demons that ex existed to haunt humans and make them sex-crazed monsters, the mythical beings that could look like anyone just to get into your pants, the imaginary monsters you only saw in movies or on TV. Hello? Did you hear him? Yes, I did, Sam. Now shut up. We're telling the truth. Do you think she's still processing it? Yes. And she'll understand right about- Yeah. Alright. It was funny while it lasted, but it's time to cut the joke short. Incubuses don't exist. There was no way they existed. That would be practically impossible. Ahem. <clears throat> Incubi is the correct plural form. And yes, we do exist. Hmm. Prove it! Oh god, Eric. <laughs> Eric is going to kill me, I swear. <laughs> as soon as the words left my mouth, I instantly, I instantly regretted them. Very well. Eric, go ahead. Hey, you! <laughs> Very well. He's the one I'm going to be romancing with in this playthrough, by the way. My sweet, you're so tempting with such non-belief. I'm Let dead. <laughs> me ease your mind with a tender kiss. I promise, you'll enjoy every minute of it. And maybe, you'll even want more. <laughs> what? Mm. Once again, I was lost in a pool in, of calm and serenity, serenity. Staring into Eric's eyes, I felt waves of heat course through through my chest and onto my face, painting my cheeks red in their wake. I couldn't help but nod and agree to his offer. But yeah, okay. Mm. <laughs> Eric! Uh, I'm dead. <laughs> With another kiss, my heart began to, to flutter once again in my chest, and my mind was sent spinning in a heated passion filled pleasure, yet I could feel my body drain of energy as he kissed me. Alright, that's enough. Aw, very well. <laughs> I feel so much better. <laughs> I bet you do. As he pulled away, I was left in a mental mush pool. I felt weak in, in the knees despite my will, my will demanding me to stand straight in front of the boys before before me, the world around me began to spin as I tried to speak. Uh, I think I'm going to... Ah, where are our manners? 
I'm James, and these are my brothers, Sam, Eric, Matthew, and Damien. Okay. Miss, are you okay? Shit. She fainted. Yeah, uh-huh. I couldn't believe it. Incubi real. It all spun around in my head until I saw only black. Floating in the darkness, my mind kept replaying the scene over and over again, reminding my body of the touch of the Incubi's lips against mine. However, I began to feel the smooth silk, sil blah, 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 silk around me and my eyelids unwillingly, unwillingly open. Mm, where? I awoke to find myself in an unfamiliar place where it was not dead. I was pretty, I was pretty sure this wasn't, I wasn't in my room. Oh wait, I lived in my grandfather's house now. Of course, it would be unfamiliar. I rubbed my eyes and sur surveyed my surroundings. I was still in the clothes that I arrived at the house with. A house, uh, ha ha, arrived arrived at the house in, but I was. Laying in a silk-covered bed, I remembered coming in the afternoon, so why was it nighttime already? Suppressing a yawn, I stretched my arms. Maybe I should order some food for delivery. I was feeling pretty hungry. I was about to sit up, but I suddenly realized that I wasn't alone. You're awake. Hi, Damien. Huh? Since when was he standing there, and who the heck was he? A guy in my room? Did we... There's no way. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I think I was saying my thoughts aloud. Why was I apologizing to a stranger who, who only said two words since I woke up? Wait, he looked early familiar. Then it all came back to me. Incubus, he was... <clears throat> Excuse me. He and his brothers came here for refuge, and two of them kissed me, and then I fainted, and that's how things came to this. Uh, oh. Mm. He was leaning against the far wall looking at me. My heart began to race as I thought of the endless list, endless list of possibilities the situation brought me. I hated the thought of being under an incubus, an incubus's power, especially in a bedroom. No matter what, I would be calm because he's a sweet baby. I looked at Blah. I took a deep breath. I was sure that if any of them wanted to take advantage of me, they would have done it already. Yeah, I'm awake now. That's good. I saw a small form of a smile on his face, which made me blush a bit. Why, though? One thing still concerned me, though. I'm not going to use my powers on you. And yeah, he has a mind-reading ability. Uh, huh? How? I can read minds. It's an ability I was born with. Each of us has a different ability, outside of our usual mind-altering powers. Great, even more surprises. I grew even more worried about the situation I was in. I see. Uh, how long have I been asleep for? For a few hours. <laughs> it's already gotten quite dark outside. Hmm. Oh, well, where are the others? My brothers are downstairs, cleaning up the blood from the lobby floor. <laughs> and making you dinner as an apology. Aww. Oh, okay, that's unexpectedly sweet. Oh, it's the least we can do after invading your home. And two of us using our powers on you. Yeah, Eric and Sam. You've got a point. Right, I had forgotten about that. It still irked me that they had practically taken advantage of me at that point. <clears throat> Even if they were... Demons, it was pretty rude to demonstrate their powers by kissing me. I wasn't some kind of I wasn't some kind of human plaything. All of this seemed pretty unreal. It was like something out of those ram ro la 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 <laughs> romance novels that Naomi sometimes read. I wished I 
I wish I could have just went back to sleep and forgotten about this. Maybe I should have just called the police on them. Then I would have never landed myself in this situation. Do you feel well enough to get out of bed? Yeah, I think- Whoa! <laughs> Trust me. I won't let you go. Um, I'm not so sure about this. I promise. I love how soft-spoken his voice is. Shout out to Jonah Scott, who's the voice of Damien. Uh, okay, I trust you. Good. I was speechless. He was carrying me as if I weighed nothing. He was so strong. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> it's alright. I'm used to it. I decided to close my mouth for the time being so that I wouldn't weird him out. Or make things more awkward than they already were. Well, he didn't seem to mind carrying me or listening to me talk though, so at least things weren't too strange. Damien seemed very quiet and calm about everything, especially with the situation we were in. However, there was, there was a sort of longing in his eyes when he looked at me that wasn't lustful. It was more in admiration. Once we reached the lobby, I decided that I felt well enough to walk on my own. As strong as he was, it was like he was carrying nothing. I didn't want him to carry me everywhere. Yes, yeah, that would be mortifying. Thank you for carrying. Thanks for carrying me, but I think I can walk on my own. Not saying I didn't like it. I mean, I I liked it, not in a weird way, of course. It's not like I get carried around all the time. <laughs> what am I? trying to say is that I was it was that it was really nice for you to do that I started to fumble over my own words again real smooth it's no problem I'll be heading to the dining room then all right see ya he gently lowered me to the ground before he walked off quietly disappearing into the shadows of the dark lobby oh hi hi Matthew Suddenly, a boy who walked, who blah, 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 who looked around my age, possibly younger, bounced up to me. He looked vaguely familiar. Oh wait, oh you're Matthew, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I accidentally mm -hmm. hit. That's me. Are you feeling any better now? We were all worried when you suddenly passed out. Yeah, I'm fine. Really? Your face is kind of red. Do you feel sick? No, I I'm fine. I'm sure of it. I must have been blushing when Damien was carrying me downstairs. How embarrassing! Well, if you say so. I hope Sam and Eric didn't make you upset. It's okay. After all, I did hit Sam after what he did. And about Eric, I just wanted you guys to prove to me what you were saying. I suppose Incubi are real then? I wondered how exactly I got myself into this mess. First, my grandfather... Then they fight with my father, blowing up at Lisa, and now this? I certainly had a knack of getting myself into sticky situations. Hmm. Oh, I have an idea. He shoved his hands into his pockets with a cheery grin on his face. Wait for it. Wait for it. Is he trying to do a magic trick? Ta-da! That's the creepy looking doll that she named Simon. Uh, what is that exactly? He smiled as if to wave it off, but when he opened his eyes and saw what he was holding, his face froze and shocked. Wait a second. What did I just make? This, this is... What he produced from his pocket was a creepy looking doll. Ah, oh, what is that? I'm not sure. <laughs> A little laugh, I swear. <laughs> His face paled considerably, and and he dropped it onto the floor, scooting away from it frantically. Get it away from me! It might be possessed by a demon or something. Oh, Matthew. But isn't he a demon himself? That's not what I wanted to make. I just wanted to surprise you with a stuffed animal or just Aww. something to cheer you up. That looks like it came straight out of a horror movie. The thought that counts. He slumped his shoulders and looked down at his feet. Oh, 
Oh, it's okay. You don't have to look so dejected. I mean, it's certainly unique. But it looks so creepy. So, it's the thought that counts, right? You wanted to cheer me up, after all. I picked up the doll and looked at it closely. Sure, it looked pretty weird at first, but it could be cute if, if I looked at it from a certain angle. I gave him a small smile. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. It's good to see you smiling, even though the thing I made still kind of creeps me out. I don't blame you, Matthew. I don't blame you. Anyway, you should come with me to the dining room. We're almost finished with the food, and, well, I don't mean to brag, but we're pretty decent chefs. Sounds great. Lead the way. Mmm, something smells good. My stomach grumbled in agreement I was starving. Oh, the girl's awake. I have a name, you know. Sam, you want to get punched again? Excuse you, I have a name, you know. Should we really care? Can I punch this kid? <laughs> Sam, I will roast that tongue for dinner if it doesn't stop flapping in that idiotic mouth of yours. <laughs> oh god, James. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I apologize for his attitude. No, it's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Good. I hope you'll enjoy the meal we prepared for you. A meal? For a second, my mind didn't understand what James meant. Maybe it was the creepy dog getting into my head and distracting me? Ah, oh, that's right. Damien and Matthew mentioned that they were making dinner as an apology. Oh, wait, you didn't have to. We insist. Besides, it's quite impossible to undo our cooking, even if you command us to. <laughs> Fair. Alright, well, thank you. Matthew put down the last of the plates on the table and bowed a bit ex exaggerately to me. Jester into the... Blah, blah. Just ran to the table with a sweeping motion. Ah, there we go. Dinner's all served. The table was filled with various foods from the electric selection of cuisines. One portion of the table was filled with elegant, elegantly plated Asian foods and another portion of some yummy looking desserts. And there were yet more and more plates than I could have possibly imagined. Whoa, that's all have food and it all looks so good. We hope you enjoy it, my sweet. God, Eric, I can't. Ah. Sweet me? That's enough, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> You're no fun, James. <laughs> I don't need to be fun, Eric. Miss, please follow me. I didn't know what came over me, whether it was his blindness or maybe his power, but I couldn't help but take his offered arm. James seemed very kind and intelligent, but aside from that, there was something that sent him apart from, like, blah, 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 <laughs> from his brothers. Not to mention, he didn't really seem to hold that much appreciation for them. Miss, I have to ask, why do you live alone? Oh, well, it's kind of a long story. I'm all ears if you wish to tell. To put it briefly, I just moved here today. That explains the luggage you brought in when you came through the front doors. By the way, we put your belongings in the room you were sleeping in. That seems to be the master bedroom, I believe. Thanks, this house is really big. I don't think I even explored the entire... The, uh, the estate when I was a child. You lived here before? Mm, no, truth be told, this is my grandfather's house. I used to visit him all the time when I was younger. May I ask why you now live in your grandfather's house? He actually passed away yesterday, was banquished to me in his will, and I was sent to live here whether I liked it or not. My condolences. It seems like you don't like the idea of living here. It's not that I don't like this house or that I don't have fond memories of being here. It's just the implications that come with staying at this estate. It's kind of complicated to explain. How do you feel about it? I certainly wasn't that bleh. certainly wasn't expecting that question, but in a good way, it was different from what I 
her the entire day at school. I appreciated the fact that he was still willing to listen. I feel angry, sad, scared, and confused. It's hard to pick it up the different emotions that I'm feeling right now. I wish I was stronger. You don't have to be strong. What do you mean? I understand that you're going through a difficult time, so it's okay to feel those emotions. You don't have to be strong at all. Aww. Thank you. Uh, are you alright? There seems to be a small bruise on your cheek. He caught me off guard with that comment. I thought no one would have noticed something as small as that. Uh oh, I'm fine. He stopped and leaned in close, a bit too close for comfort, and maybe it was just me inspecting my face. He was really quite tall, having to bend over or uh, bleh, bend. To bend over so much so, to just look at me straight in the face. It was hard to look at him, especially when he was so close. After a few seconds, he straightened up and began walking again. Hmm. Well, if you're having any problems, I'm always here to listen. Aww. That's really kind of you to offer that. My pleasure. Here's your seat. Let me get your chair for you, lovely lady. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Oh, uh... Eric was very charming, and his smile pulled at my heart. The way he kept flirting with me definitely designated him as the charmer of the demon, yet there was a little distance in his eyes. By the way, I apologize for my behavior earlier. Stealing your second kiss like that. Huh? Oh yeah, when I didn't believe that they were incubi. It's fine, I guess. I mean, you didn't just get up and grab a kiss for no reason. I'm not like as Sam. forward, unlike Sam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Suddenly, Eric leaned in and whispered in my ear. I won't lie, though. I enjoyed kissing you and feeling you melt in my arms. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> I was torn between smacking them and trying to play it cool. You sure are quite the charmer. Yes, I am known for that. Uh, yeah? As much as I do appreciate the constant compliments, you don't have to keep talking to me like that. Like what? <laughs> he patted his eyelids as if he had no idea what I was talking about that I couldn't help but laugh. Oh, well, like you're trying to get my pants out the time. I can assure you, I'm just a lover of beautiful women. <laughs> Something tells me that there's more to it than that. For a moment, he looked away, losing a bit of his smile before I could question it, though. Before I could question it, though, he turned back to me with a new teasing smile, of course. Did you want there to be more? Eric. <laughs> I didn't want to hit him, but I didn't know how to react, so I couldn't look at him. He merely chuckled again in my ear. <laughs> Sorry. You just look so cute when you're blushing. <laughs> I felt my face heat up sim simply from his words. I felt that, 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 that. I then felt Eric take my hand and kiss it gently. I hope you'll enjoy dinner, however, my dear. Mm <laughs> hmm. I drew my attention back to the dishes. I was both intrigued and slightly scared at the amount of food they made. Seeing my expression, Eric leaned forward and proudly smiled, gesturing to all of the dishes with a dramatic sweep of his arm. I made almost all of the dishes myself. Humorously enough, Matthew looked at him with a shocked expression as if he was betrayed. His face changed instantly to that of a frown. And I'm the Queen of the Nile! Oh, Matthew... What's that supposed to mean? They're a little mean to him. Me, you, and James did the work together, dummy. It's you, James, and I, Matthew. Aww. <laughs> little boys will always make mistakes. Poor Matthew. <laughs> Matthew looked at James in disbelief, probably for a side deal with Eric, and he annoyingly swiveled back to Eric to confront him. I'm not a little boy. I'm barely a year younger than you. Well, you certainly don't act like it. Ouch. <laughs> I really can't help but laugh. Matthew seemed 
very much like a child. He was adorable. However, I couldn't help but feel like in a way he was much more mature than the others, especially Eric. Huh? Is something funny? <laughs> no, no, it's nothing at all. Thank you for the meal, all of you. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome, miss. Such a well-mannered young lady. Beautiful inside and mm -hmm. out. Eric, knock it off! Hey, Sam. In agreement with Matthew, Sam cocked up his head and glared at Eric, of course. Seriously, you're getting really annoying with that suck-up act. <laughs> It was obvious that Sam was the bad boy of the group. He had his big he had this big tough act, and it was obvious he was physically stronger than the rest of the guys. But was there more to him than that? Yes. I'm just trying to be a gentleman. The young girl has already gone through so much. She deserves a good treatment. Aww. There's a difference between being a gentleman and being an obnoxious flirt. <laughs> Schooled even by James. You're gonna need some cold water for that burn. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I don't believe we caught your name even though you know each of us. I'm Laura. It's a pleasure to finally know your name. Yeah, that's a nice name. They were all comfortable around me despite the awkward situation we were in earlier. It was as if it were natural for them to be around humans. I guess that was just how Incubi worked. But I was still curious about one thing. Excuse me. All at once they looked at me. I didn't know why, but having all of them look at me made me feel kind of important, like a queen or something. What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you all for the food, but I still want to know what, why you all came here. I feel like I don't quite understand. Understand, yeah, like being told that a bunch of incubi randomly appearing in your house was perfectly understandable. Oh, um, how do we explain? We were attacked. Sam, we came here don't be rude. Heal. What's so difficult to understand? Sam? Now you're just being rude, Sam. <laughs> I'm just saying, how is that difficult to understand? No, I mean, what specifically happened? Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently, we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of misfits. Misfits? So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. That's fine. So, you are all better now, right? Yep, all thanks to you. Huh? Me? You see, beautiful, we feed on sexual energy. But we don't just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. Hmm. I was still shocked about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that give them power. It was anything physical. No wonder I was out for a while. These incubies intrigued me, but at the same time, I could almost hear a warning sign going off in my head. Is there anything else you wish to know? Yeah, well, what do you all plan to do now? Yeah, what are we going to do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here, and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. Hmm. We can take them easily. Are you sure you guys are strong enough for that? Not without more training, Sam. Hmm. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter with them. At, the, at that moment, I didn't know what came over me, but I suddenly felt sorry for them. They couldn't possibly survive out there if they didn't know it was illegal to break into people's homes. They probably didn't know a bunch of other stuff. They probably would cause chaos all over town. Or on the flip side, they would they could be taken in for question and be poked at like rap, like lab frogs for research. That would, that was even worse. But most of all, they reminded me of back then, and like I did before. I'm going to skip this. I had the opportunity to help them, though. Would I? 
I wanted to, but I wasn't sure if that was the best idea after all. Five demons in my house wasn't exactly the living arrangement that I had imagined when I first moved in. There was a matter of making sure no no one found out about their powers. Thinking about them as left breads made my stomach queasy. And even if they passed for humans, how could I expect having guys living in my house imagine my friends came over they would practically think I was part of a harem or something oh god imagine if my parents came over I think my mom would faint who knows what my dad could do I think he would have them arrested on the spot Ugh, this was hard maybe I should have ran out the pros and cons list before actually having to make this decision don't worry too much about it you have plenty of time to decide besides you should do what makes you happy as well. Hmm. It was strange that I had to. I had happened. I happened to remember what my grandfather said to me when I was little, but it did kind of make sense. All right, hang on. They worked in the same. In the same says. Ha ha ha. They worked in the, in the same exact situation that I was in before, but I did want to help them out. I think it would ease my conscience and also make me a bit happy to give them help, as weird as that sounded. Clutching my hands into fists, I strengthened my resolve to speak up. Well, well uh, you could... What was that, lovely lady? <laughs> that is, uh... Spit it out already. Sam, shut up. You could stay with me here if you'd like. As soon as I finished my sentence, the room became still. I'm not sure what went through their heads from my words. The silence in the air cut like a knife until I finally spoke up once more. It seemed like you all needed a place to stay and Well, I just moved into this giant house, so it seemed like it made sense. It was still quiet in the room. I decided to keep talking. If you would like to stay here, though, there are two things that, that I need all of you to follow. Yes. First of all, you can't use your powers or deliberately do something that might harm me or any guest that comes over. Well, save for enemies, but you get the drift. That sounds reasonable. Second, you have to help me with the errands around the house. This place is quite big, so yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. No. It's alright, really. I mean, I just started living here myself, so I appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. We'll live here and train while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. Sam's face. I can't. <laughs> Sam's face. How it's changed. What? Are you serious? <laughs> Deal with it, Sam. Shh, be quiet, Sam. I haven't slept in a bed for days. <laughs> <laughs> they all seem to like the idea, except for Sam. And hey, I didn't really hate the idea either, even if they were incubi. It would be interesting having five guys help, help me with taking care of the house, given they would follow the rules that I had just laid down. Grr, fine! <laughs> But we're not staying here forever. Only until we can beat up that group of punks. <laughs> I think that is a reasonable time Sam, limit for I our love stay. you, but my gosh. Yes, this is awesome. Also beautiful. If you need a bedfellow. Eric. <laughs> Eric. Um Eric, knock it off. <laughs> It's like, calm yourself. I was happy that they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they all needed help and want to help people was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in. Finally, I'm starving. Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with food on the table. I noticed James' eye twitching in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? 
You're both acting like pigs. Oh, let them have a little True. freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently either. I'm sure they've been starving. <laughs> yeah. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. <laughs> I almost couldn't hold it in. So I didn't. <laughs> they are so cute. I couldn't hold in my laughter anymore. I, as I laughed, Matthew and Sam looked my way, faces stuffed. Is something funny? What are you laughing at? <laughs> I stopped to catch my breath. So I leaned over the table and took a few breaths before replying. You both are so funny. They are so adorable. Both of their faces turned to a slight pink before they looked away from me and they swallowed the food in their mouths. Sh shut up! <laughs> We're not funny! We're hungry! <laughs> So they're so adorable. Well, we're we're glad that we made you laugh. Shut up, Matthew. <laughs> what? I'm just saying. <laughs> See, James, it's entertainment for her. <laughs> <laughs> they were funny to me. At least they enjoyed the food. That as I watched, I took a couple pieces of food myself and placed them on my plate before eating as well. Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange eating with just guys, but they were enjoying be to be around. They made me feel like I was feel like a part of their family as we ate together. However, our peace was soon dis disturbed. Huh? My mom, excuse me. Hey, uh, I'm gonna skip this. Uh, I'm uh, great. Now, how am I going to do this? Well, is to something wrong? Plan a house party for her parents. She has to organize a house party for her parents. Huh? How did... Oh, right. Mind reading. <laughs> <laughs> His life is so adorable. Again, Jonah, the voice of Damien, your life is so adorable. But yeah, I gotta do it soon or my parents will be really disappointed. I'll have to stay up and organize everything tonight. Hey, why don't we help you? That's what we're here for, right? Aww. I don't see why not. I can name a few reasons why we shouldn't. Sam. Not now. Sam. Back off! <laughs> uh, we'll take care of everything, miss. Just leave everything to us. That was surprising. I didn't think the boys would offer help right off the bat. I couldn't help but smile. I was actually rather thankful now that I let them stay. Now I didn't have to do everything alone. As I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but yawn. Feeling a little tired over there, princess? Yeah, <laughs> it's been a long day. At least tomorrow, the, tomorrow's the weekend so I can sleep in. Then it hit me. Wait, where are you all going to sleep? We found some guest rooms on the opposite end of the house from the master bedroom. I'm sure those will do just fine. Oh, got it. All right, then. I'm heading to my room to study and sleep. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night. I will. You too. With that, I left the dining room and went to my room. Eric, no. Eric? What? I wasn't going to do anything. Yes, you were. Yes, he was. Shh! Oh, you shush, Eric. <laughs> all right. <laughs> This time I'm going to skip this part. <laughs> Damien? I stared into the eyes of Damien. His face was painted with worry and concern, and I knew he must have seen my dream. Why did I dream of Eric holding me, though? You can't control your dreams. Oh, well, I guess you're right. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. What time is it? It's 9 a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I, uh, well... You can't control your mind reading. No, not yet at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. Is well. everything all right? Huh? Yeah, I'm all right. That's good. I'm assuming you had a nightmare. Yeah, I'm sorry for disturbing you both. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides, we'd rather make sure you're okay before Aww. anything. Oh, thank you. Now, why don't you come downstairs with us and have some breakfast? 
I'm sure some nice food will take your mind off of what you dreamt of. It was embarrassing to be the damsel in distress once again, but I felt rather happy that James and Damien were concerned for me despite only knowing me for a short time. I wasn't sure if it was just courtesy or if they were generally concerned. I couldn't exactly read their minds. Alright. The two boys led me back to the dining room where the smell of bacon and eggs danced in the air. The smell of wet blah blah wafted from the kitchen and made its way into the room, making my stomach growl in need. Breakfast smells good. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. I nodded before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. The feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instinctively, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as my eyes closed, I felt the hand place itself on top of my head, breaking me out of my thoughts. Huh? Morning. You alright? Hey, Sam. Yeah, I'm fine. Sam, the owner of the head, hand on my head, raised an eyebrow at me before rustling my hair and moving away to sit down at the table. He then barked towards the kitchen where James was working. Hey! Is the food done yet? I'm starving! Okay, Sam, there's no need to yell. There's no need to yell, Sam! <laughs> You're yelling too! Don't argue with me! <laughs> From behind me, Eric appeared and sat beside me rubbing his temple with an obvious annoyance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. Castle? For some reason, when I heard the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. These guys had a castle? Sam looked at me and smirked at my reaction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. And wouldn't it be logical to not yell? Right? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Soon James and Damien appeared, hands from the plates that carried bacon, eggs, toast, and waffles. They placed the plates down by each seat before seating themselves. Mmm, my favorite. Finally. Thank you for the breakfast. It looks amazing. It's our pleasure. All of a sudden, my phone began to ring, assuring me to pull it from my pocket and answer. Hello? Hey! Good morning! Hey, Suzu! Hey, Naomi! Naomi! Guess who's at your door right now? Right on cue, there was a knock from the lobby door. My heart stopped. Suzu and Naomi were here. I'll get it! My heart quickly began to pound in my chest. Matthew was in the lobby and he'd get the door first. I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed out to the dining room. Rushed out of the dining room. As I passed through the archway between the dining room and the lobby, I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brass handle, causing the world to go into slow motion. Matthew, don't! But before my words could reach his ears, Matthew opened the door and revealed the surprised faces of Naomi and Suzu. Uh, um. Um. The world around me stopped as soon as Susie and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who merely stared back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to, to freezing in a matter of seconds. Uh. <laughs> Hi? <laughs> I cannot believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week was already bad enough. To make matters worse, I had frozen in place. Please, for God's sake, someone do something other than stand there. Who are you? <laughs> S Suzu, let me explain. What's going on here? Who's at the door, Matthew? Oh. <laughs> Soon the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. The situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. Then why did one of them open the door? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Hmm. <laughs> um. It was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder. I felt the tension in my body almost fade away. It turned... I had to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. I stared at James 
wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who they were? Everything seemed surreal. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room along with Susie and Naomi and sat across from their confused gazes. Naomi and Susie sat down. Sat down. Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising our guests. Whoa, this looks amazing! Thank you! Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meals. <laughs> Make sure you dig in! I looked at Naomi and Suzu as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouth. Hopefully the food would ease their minds for whatever James wanted to reveal. As Naomi and Suzu ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more red in the face. So, Anderson, are you going to tell us what's going on? Uh, well, you see... Gently, James placed a hand on my shoulder again, singling me to just eat my food. As they began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Suzu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense. It's such a huge house. A huge house for a <laughs> wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. <laughs> but why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Suzu. Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work. So she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, yeah something, something like, that. like that. We're sorry if we made this situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. Hmm. I guess. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. Right. There's an arcade? Matthew. <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Yeah. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. Aw. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Aw, James. But no, I'm gonna stay here and help. Seriously? Sam, not now. Sam, not now. <laughs> well, I... I wanted to help out, but at the same time, I wanted to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. We're going to stay. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Besides, it's my housewarming party. I should help out, too. Want us to help out as well? I think we got it all taken care of. Thanks, though, girls. Yeah, it's all right. fine. We'll head on out then, so we're not in the way. All right. Sorry, girls. I'll hang out with you guys soon. It's all good, Anderson. We'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Aw. Thank you. I led them back into the lobby and, and walked them to the doors, opening it, opening it for them with a thankful smile. They both gave me hugs before walking out to Naomi's car, which was parked in the driveway. And with that, they left. I and with that, they left. I was happy that they wanted to help, but I, but I had to do this on my own. It was not their work, so I didn't want to force it on them just because they were my best friends. We had the entire day to work. The party was tonight, and we had to do all of the la 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 la. <laughs> and we had to do all we could do to make everything right. We sat down and talked about what needed to happen before the party that started that night. Each guy had been assigned to a different part of the party to do, and right after lunch, we began to work. Since everything was taken care of by at least one inc incubus, 
James told me I could assist one of them. The question was, who? We're going to help out Eric. I stayed in the dining room knowing that the table had to become a buffet table. As I looked around the room carefully, I noted that the floor needed needed waxing and the table surfaces needed a major dusting. Eric came up next to me, lowered the small mop and bucket he had brought it onto the floor, rolled up his sleeves up higher on his arm before looking at me with a raised eyebrow. Are you sure you want to work with me with cleaning this place up? It'll be a lot of cleaning and tidying. Plus, we have to move the chairs to the corner. Yeah, that's fine. I'm okay with it. I shook my head, rolling up my sleeves and walking to the table, grabbing and holding. Grabbing and hold a chair. Grabbing a hold of a chair. I can't talk. <laughs> I think I can handle lifting a couple chairs and moving them. Eric smiled at me with a soft chuckle before following my lead. Eventually, we had moved all the chairs to the corner of the room and had begun cleaning the room and the table. Silence consumed the air as we both focused on cleaning. I decided to start mopping the floor, but as I stopped towards the bucket, my foot rolled over a Small fluffy object causing me to slip. I'm guessing it is um this doll the doll thing that um Matthew made for her. Ah Before I hit the floor, however, I wound up in the arms of Eric, staring up at him and they danced like dip while gripping onto his shirt. His face held pure concern. As he held on and looked down at me. Are you all right, princess? All I can do was nod as I stared at Eric. He was genuinely concerned. There was no flirtation or smirk on his face. It was cute to see a new side of him. Aww. <sighs> Eric let out a small sigh in relief. That's a relief. You didn't twist your ankle, did you? No, I'm fine. Gently, I felt Eric's arm dip under my knees so he could lift me up bridal style. I gripped tighter on his shirt before he sat me on the table and knelt down to look at my feet. I I'm really fine. Eric didn't speak as he gently looked over my ankles, lightly massaging them to, te to test for pain. I didn't feel any pain. I felt pleasure. I bent my lip as Eric gently massaged his fingers over my skin. I'd had foot massages before, but Eric had amazing skills. Each touch and press sent a wave of pleasure running up my spine. I had to fight to hold back a moan. Eric's face, though, didn't shift to any of mischief or seduction. It remained as concerned as ever. He was Full of surprises. Aww. Eventually, he finished looking over my feet and smiled in relief. He slowly, slowly stood up and smiled. His usual smile at me with a small giggle. You were right, princess. You were fine. <laughs> Told you. Eric gently lifted me off the table and lowered me to the to the floor before placing this. With kiss on my forehead and continuing his work, I stood there for a moment before slowly walking to the bucket and cleaning as well. My heart continued to pound. We both finished cleaning that room. And then the party, which I'm going to skip. But what? I'm so s Do you- What do you think will happen? What do you think? Do you think? Simply nod to him. So. Oh. You're the one who. I'll go get. Since you're. <gasps> Hush, Sam. <laughs> Get to Malik's, here we go. Don't worry. No one will hurt you. Are you sure? Are you really sure? 
All of us shot our heads towards the doors, finally pinning down the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swung open, revealing a sight that I would have never expected to see. Skin red as blood, eyes black and gold, piercing into mine, roughened, roughened up clothes, and a pistol in his hand, I saw a monster. I covered my mouth not to not scream at the sight. Dried blood covered the banana around his neck as he smirked at me and the boys around me. Beside the red-skinned man, there was a similar-looking woman in matching thug-like clothes. Aw, oh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I wouldn't find you, did you? I hoped you would, you piece of... All of a sudden, the man raised his gun in Sam's face and instantly pulled the trigger. We all gasped in shock, and instinctively expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face, but there was nothing. What, what the fuck? The, pa the bla bla oh. place was protected by magic, Malix. Wh what? What should have been a headshot with ended with a loud but empty blank shot. The pistol echoed its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over in aggravation. Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after its first shot. Why the fuck won't you work? This place is protected. That's right. What did you say, shrimp? Oh, don't call him that. This place has a seal, protecting it from hellborn magic. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? <laughs> the man ground and threw his gun at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground a couple of times before sliding further away, hitting the wall in a final stop as it stopped moving, the gun faded into black flame that disappeared into the air. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. Mm-hmm. Malix, that was his name. His existence resonated in my memory from the dream I had. However, I looked to Matthew in the same confusion as Malix did. This place is protected by magic? It would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables hellborn magic. Mm-hmm. Malx's face grew to the extreme anger. His fist tightened as if he was crushing a stress ball. Then what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? Hang on. Out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took the chance to stand up to, to him instead of being powerless like I was in the dream. Screw you, Malix. Malix suddenly laughed wildly, staring at me in disbelief. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Who is the bitch out of her cage? What is this? A reverse harem or something? <laughs> oh my god, Malik, shut up. <laughs> Malik grinned at me evilly, walking close to me. I ducked underneath Malik's incoming hand. I stared at his hand and his black flame tattoo in surprise as I took a couple steps back from Malik. Matthew and Damien stepped in front of me, guarding me from Malik with their arms. <laughs> a quick one. I'm liking you more and more. Back off, Malix! Thanks, Matthew. Don't start acting tough, you pathetic excuse of a demon! Shut up! Oh, did I make little Matthew cry? Why don't you just grow a pair? Rude! Leave Matthew alone! <sighs> Enough, Malix! The woman who had been standing in silence the whole time planted a firm hand on Malik's shoulder. Malik looked back at her with a growl and a glare that could kill. Since when did you get the guts to speak out of place? We both know you've never controlled me. I want them dead just like you do. But now's not the time. <laughs> Fuck off. I know what I'm doing. Do you really, Malik? Do you really? Do you? 
Even if you did fight them, there's five against two. We never win. Shut up! <laughs> Let's go, Melix! We're wasting our time! The two growled at each other if they could have used their magic, I could sense the fire would grow from under their teeth. Malik grunted and glared at the boys, and he pointed at James wanting so badly to use his fingers like a knife. <laughs> Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> oh, good God, Malik. Then Malik turned to me, moving his finger to point directly between my eyes. And don't think you're safe. <laughs> Step outside. I dare you. <laughs> I'm coming off his lap. <laughs> With that, Malik and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I alone once again. I felt my knees give out from under me, forcing the boys to quickly turn to catch me. Whoa, whoa! Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, why was he here? He's been closely tracking us. Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. Hmm. <sighs> we should have stopped him and finished it here. Agreed, Matthew, but... For once, Matthew, I agree with you. Hmm. I stood and rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps Malik left behind on me. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in fear with his words. Malix, was he a demon? That son of a bitch is not a demon. He's a devil. A devil? There's a difference? Yes. Demons come from a different plane of existence called the Abyssal Plains. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know as hell. Hmm. Despite a we. Oh, shoot. Yes. I didn't mean to cut Demons you off. Demons come from I'm a sorry. different plane of existence called the Abyssal Plains. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know as hell. Despite us not being human, we are very different creatures. Hmm. We actually have brains, for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment. Demons, like us, know when to use our powers and when not to. We're not stupid. I know you're not stupid, but... Devils follow orders from higher-ups in their order and their power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free wills and don't rely on where they came from to use their powers. Hmm. This was all so confusing. Demons and devils and magic all existed? And I happened to land in the middle of it? What do we do? You're safe. You've been protected as well. What? What Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects you. Your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw him, or something of that nature. We can sense its aura around your body. Hmm. I couldn't believe my ears. I was the th it was the third day of surprises, and this one took the cake of being the most surprising. I felt my head spin once again. What did I get myself into? Miss, please don't worry. We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. <laughs> I'm gonna kick his ass right now! Hmm. Until then, we'll protect you as much as we can. All if right. Malix comes back, we'll be here for you. Alright then. But what about going outside? Won't he- Like we said, you have a protection spell on you. Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'd be just like any other human you can fight back against. Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? Well, yeah, but... I felt somewhat relieved that I was mostly safe from Malik. still. I could not help but feel very nervous and apprehensive about the future. The boys were safe, hear the train, and become stronger, but what if Malik did the same? Even more so, I was lost about how my grandfather knew about magic. I had to find out. At least I had time. Before we continue, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Alright, I'm gonna skip this. I promise to be with you forever. Well, I like you're hearing so these. Important to me. I... You're so important to me. I swear I'll give my life to you. Please, let me love you. I'll be by your side, always. I can't imagine living without you. I want to be with you. I love you. <laughs> 
Yeah, I like hearing those. Alright, let's explore the house. And I will not skip anymore once we meet up with Eric. That's where we find the magic stuff. And we will not disturb these guys. Alright, now, now it's time to find one of the inky guys, which is Eric. Time to go hunt for Eric. <laughs> I quickly watched. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I can't. Quickly rushed back and grabbed a second food dish before hunting down one of the boys. Hi, Eric. I returned to the backyard hoping to find an incubus still there. Luckily, my gut feeling was right. Eric was beside the gazebo looking at the small flower that was growing on the railing of it. As I approached, Eric turned his head and smiled his usual smile. Hello, princess. wonder how many times the actor um, Chris Tavresquante had to record the word princess. I am actually kind of curious how many times he said the word princess. And also when I put the stream onto YouTube, I will put the, the, his social links in like description of my video when I put them up on YouTube. <laughs> Oh really? boy. You did not have to do that, princess. Oh. Eric, I love you. <laughs> no, no, it's fine here. Eric smiled and took his food, eating a little bit before looking to the flower again. Out of curiosity, I looked as well. It was a simple white daisy in full bloom. Eric shook his head and chuckled softly as I joined in the, in the flower gazing. <laughs> Sorry. I was simply reminded of home. Oh, yeah? Huh? No, you're fine. <laughs> what about home were you reminded of? Eric looked to the sky with a soft sigh with, and smiled before looking to the flower again. The castle, mainly. Despite us not being there anymore, it was still our home. Aww. We grew up there our entire lives as brothers. There wasn't a day that went by when we weren't all doing something exciting. It was an empty excitement, of course, but it was still something that bonded us all together. Hmm. Eric slightly trailed off, looking lost in the nostalgia of his thoughts. I didn't know if I wanted to bother him while he remembered something so obviously important to him. Um. Please tell me more. Eric turned again to me with a slightly surprised look. You wish to know more? I want to know more about you. Why not? I'm really curious about the place you lived in and to learn more about you and your past. Eric nodded before looking to the flower again. After a second, he gained a look of realization before looking to me again. Would you like me to show you something instead? Of course. I tilted my head in confusion, but nodded nonetheless. What I was expecting could not have been, could not, uh, uh, could not have prepared me for what I saw. Eric gently brushed his fingers uh, against the petals of the of the daisy, making it gently quake at his touch. Uh, as the daisy abnormally shivered, his it the uh, ah, its petals shifted from white to purple. The yellow center gently faded to a pink. Yeah, I, I can't pronounce that word. As the stem began to burn black, I could only stare as Eric... Fuck, fuck, bleh, why words? The, the flower from its place and presented it to me. Watch closely. Okay. I kept my eyes to the flower as Eric began to mutter something. It sounded close to Latin, but I wasn't sure. Regardless, the flower began to glow in Eric's hand. Small crystal-like spores floated up from the pink center and began to form a circle in the air. As the circle closed, this, the center filled with smoke, forming a screen of some sort. It was misty, so I couldn't see anything. 
What is this? Just watch. I raised an eyebrow, but I followed his instruction. Eventually, the mist faded away, revealing a large throne room. It was all of stone and tile with the throne itself covered in red fabric and gold metal. Despite it being a mere image in a magic mirror, I felt small looking at the sight of the throne room. Wow, that looks amazing. That's our castle. It's a wonderful place. Servants and parties galore. Does your father sit on the throne when he's at the parties? <laughs> Very much so. He despises dancing and socializing, so he makes the throne his home. <coughs> I almost choked in my drink. <coughs> Do you think he's still there now? I must have... Struck a small chord with Eric because he hesitated before responding. Eric smiled only slightly. We don't know. When we left, we didn't look back. However, we are sure he's still there, since no one followed us out of the abyssal plains. Hmm. I bit my lip. Maybe I shouldn't have asked. I felt really bad. However, I didn't. It didn't fell feel fell fell feel it. For long, the magic suddenly stopped and faded away while Eric dropped the daisy. As the daisy turned turned back to its white and yellow colors, Eric dropped to a knee, groaning in pain. Oh, Eric, are you okay? Eric, are you alright? Yes, princess. I'm fine. I just used too much energy, that's all. Eric? I dropped to a knee to try and examine Eric closer. His face was pale while his purplish eyes shifted back and forth between purple and gold. Gold. His breath was heavy, which concerned me. He used too much energy? That meant he needed more. Please don't worry, princess. I'm fine. Don't worry your beautiful head about it. Aww. I felt responsible. I had to help. I quickly grabbed at Eric's face and tilted his head to ankle with mine. Shifting myself closer, I brought my lips to his and kissed him deeply. I didn't know if this would help, but it was how he got energy before. I shut my eyes, waiting for the draining feeling to reappear in my body. However, Eric grabbed my shoulders and forced me back. I opened my his face. Oh. Open. My eyes and stared into his frightened gold, uh, golden eyes in surprise. At the same time, I noticed a pink hue run across Eric's face. Princess, what are you doing? I didn't know why, but I felt both irritated and accomplished at the question and at the look he was giving me. Where, where was his flirting? Where was his cocky smirk? But from what I remembered, he took advantage of me when we met. Yet now he was somehow acting inferior to me? I grabbed his hands and removed them from my shoulders, tangling my fingers with his. I'm trying to help and give you some of my energy. Use your energy to show me that sight. So I wanted to pay you back for that unless you don't want me to help. Well, I've, I've already taken your energy once before. I just... That was before. I want to give you energy now. Just let me. All of a sudden, I felt that familiar feeling of warmth run through my body once again. I felt my body slightly heat up as Eric quite quick, quickly released my hands and wrapped them around, around my waist, dropping to both knees in front of me. He stared at me with desire in his gaze as he pulled my body to his. Eric... Leaned his forehead to mine, letting the tips of our noses gently caress each other as he spoke. You spoil me. Eric. Before I knew it, that was on top of Eric as he, as he laid on the grass, as, as he laid on the grass below, I stared wide-eyed as he pulled me into a hot, passionate kiss with gentle hand on the back of, back of my head, Eric's other hand rested on the small of my back while I rested my hands on his chest. 
I moved myself to strain, stra straddle his, uh, ha, 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 I can't read words. Straddle his hip. Where did I leave off at? I lost my place. Straddle his, his lips to be comfortable in the kiss. The energy from my body was slowly draining, making me feel light and warm. It was almost pitiful how comfortable and how willing it was. I was in this situation. Still, I have held no regrets. I was enjoying every bit of this kiss. While Eric held me, he gently rolled us, rolled us both over so he was on top of me, kissing me, kissing me hotly and holding me tightly. I was tempted to wrap my legs around him, but I re remained focused on the kiss. It was better that I was on the bottom anyway with with my energy slowly fading from my body. However, the draining feeling suddenly stopped as Eric pulled away and looked down at me. I stared up at him as we both panted for air. I had never kissed like that before, and I was so lost in the moment that I'd forgotten how to breathe. Eric, however, didn't move for me, but moved a strand of hair from my face. I still full of desire. I'm completely full, and yet I still desire you. His, the way his voice sounds, I love it. I could feel the hold of his mind altering spell fade away, but I still felt hot. Something told me that I wanted more, but at the same time, I wasn't sure if I truly did want to give any more. I opened the opportunity and I was enjoying it as much as he was. I wanted more and I was going to let him keep going. I wanted to keep going. I reached up, pulled him down, and kissed him, giving him silent approval to keep going. I could feel him pull on the tail of my bow, releasing it, falling his hand off from around my neck. He moved the ribbon to the <coughs> to the ground beside me before gently unbuttoning the top buttons of, the, of my blouse, stopping at the buttons of my but my stomach. Desire in in my body drove me insane, forcing me forcing a moan to escape my lips as he ran kisses from my lips to my exposed neck. As he began to ravish my neck and shoulder and hot kisses, I leaned my my head back a, against the grass and let a pleasureful sigh escape my lips. Eric was ruthless in his past, past, past the blah, 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 passionate kisses on my skin. Eric didn't stop touching and kissing me, making more moans and gas rush out of my mouth. Into the open air, he was full, but he was as hot as I was. I couldn't even comprehend how much time we had spent making out. I was so lost in the pleasure that I didn't care. Call it sinful, but I didn't care. I loved it. His touch, his kiss, his heat. I desired it beyond anything at the moment, even as he lowered his kisses down my chest to just above my bra. My heart was beating wildly in my chest. Something about Eric intrigued me immense, immensely. But something made my heart quicken for him. It couldn't have been love, but it was too passionate to be lust. What was it? However, I began to feel dizzy seeing the sky start to spin almost wildly. I gripped onto Eric's shoulder trying to signal him to stop, but my mind faded to black before I could let out another sound. I felt good. I didn't care that I was blacked out. I felt warm and fuzzy in the darkness. I never knew indulged in that kind of passion would be that good. I know I now just waited to awaken, hopefully in a good way. My eyes eventually fluttered open, adjusting to the sights around me. I felt familiar silks underneath me, letting me know that I was in my bed. I slowly sat up, stretching from the tiredness that still lingered. I felt a very soft pain on my neck and shoulders that and I could feel my swollen lips pulse gently and healing. However, when I looked down at my body, I saw that my shirt had been pulled back and rebuttoned as if nothing had happened between me and Eric. I was just missing my ribbon. Before I turned to get out of bed, though, I, I spotted my ribbon on, a, on the pillow to spit. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> on. The pillow beside the one I slept on, it was tied with 
In a nice bow around the daisy, Eric had picked with a small note attached to it, gently slipped the note from the tie and opened it to read it. You've spoiled me, my princess. I am eternally grateful that you let me indulge like that. Have a good rest. <laughs> I stared at the note, letting a small smile grace my lips. Wild, Tim. I enjoyed it despite the first time's circumstance. It was cute, though, to imagine him thanking me for something we both did and enjoyed. I brought the daisy to my nose and gently inhaled its soft fragrance, letting the memories of our meeting flood in my mind. <coughs> Give me. I indulged myself too, Eric. I looked to the time out of curiosity. The large white numbers on my phone showed 5.31 p.m. Yikes, four hours of being knocked out and I still feel tired? It was Sunday, so I was allowed to sleep longer if I wanted to. All right. Let's skip all the Yo, way. Yo, Anderson! The girls are going to pick me up. And let's find out what Eric's actual name is. My name. Your name? My true name isn't Eric, miss. I want you to know my real name. If something were to happen. His true name? What did he mean? Why was he telling me this now? I remembered reading about a demon's name from the journal I read yesterday. If I knew a demon's true name, you could ascend, you could, uh, blah, 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 blah. You can summon them to you no matter where you were or where they were. Eric pulled me to him and leaned close to whisper in my ear. My name is Uzeris. Uzeris. As he said his name, I could feel it lock into my memory. Something in my head would make sure it, I would never forget it. He pulled away and smiled at me despite still carrying worry in his eyes. If you are in any danger, call my name. I will. I promise that I'll come and help you. I love Eric. I stared up at Eric, unable to say anything. I could only lock that blah 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 blah. <laughs> I could only nod a response in Eric's mouth before kissing my hand and heading into the dining room. Something told me that name would be used eventually. And right on cue, N Naomi drove up to the gates with Susie waving me down. I rushed out the door as we headed to school, talking about the homework and the coming day. Alright, let's get to where hey, are you who we, did we see Malik's. Here we go. All right, let's call for Eric. All of a sudden, a bright purple light en engulfed the room, causing the devils around me to cover themselves. What the? Ah! Guts of guts of wind rushed past me, almost forcing me back. I co I covered my face with my arms, bracing myself and standing my ground. I tried to peek through my arms to see what was going on, but the light continued to shine brightly. As the, gut, as the gust slowly started to die, the light began to fade, revealing Eric. Eric? Did you miss me? However, the seductive smile that graced his lips quickly disappeared as he turned to Malik. His mouth lowered his arms. Eric glared. You really are evil at its core. Kidnapping an innocent woman like you did? It's disgusting how we demons are confused for your kind. Mm. <laughs> Look at this little manhole Eric right here, boys. Might as well sleep with a disease. Malix! I swear. Malix, you need to learn to shut up. The devils around them laughed, including Eris. I felt a wind of anger, but Eric must have taken it from me and added it to his own. Eric flicked his his wrists and arms across his body. Producing a small whip, whipping noise through the air. However, Malix hissed and reached for his for his cheek as if the air had slapped him hard. What the? 
When Malix removed his hand from his cheek, I stared wide-eyed at the at the large slash that was revealed on a mixture of red and black blood gently dripped from the wound, causing Malix to growl angrily at Eric. So, pretty boy thinks he has balls, huh? Hmm. 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 <laughs> well, time to make this pretty boy a dead bitch. Malix. All of a sudden, Malix lifted his gun towards Eric and pulled the trigger. I gasped and tensed up, not believing what I was seeing. As I braced myself for Malix's bullet to... And I can't pronounce that word. Huh. I end my itself to... And then I can't say it. Itself in, into Eric. However, a large ethereal tendril shot up in front of Eric's body, sprouting from the ground to, by his feet. Quickly after the bullet evaporated into the tendril, several others appeared, forming a dark purple crown across Eric's body. What the? What is that? Did you expect me to come unprepared the second time around? Hey! Thanks to my lovely princess, I can now use the full extent of my powers. Unfortunately for you, that means I'm afraid you will lose this fight. What the? Oops. What is? Did you expect me to come unprepared the second that, time around? Thanks to my lovely princess, I can now use the full extent of my powers. Unfor really like that art. You cocky little shit! Malik charged up his energy and began to fire bullets after bullet at Eric and Inker. However, the tendril danced across to Eric's body with ease, blocking each one as if they were mere pebbles to the wall. The remaining devil stared, trying to figure out what to do. Help Malik or watch in silence. Eris, however, walked up beside me and crossed her arms as she watched with an amused smirk on her face. Die already! Eric chuckled before snapping his fingers, causing a roll of ten girls to appear behind him, pointing their sharp ends at Malik, who continued to fire bullets at the incubus. The ten girls up uprooted themselves and floated into the air, straightening it out to large spikes before quickly splintering into multiple thinner spikes. Wow. I could only stare, completely lost and intrigued at the sight that Eric whipped his hand across his body again. At Eric's command, the spikes flew at Malik, slashing and stabbing into his body. Oh gosh. They were thin, barely making a pencil-sized wound, and only a few went into his body. The others scraped and scratched at, the, at his skin as they flew by. This didn't kill Malix, however. Malix growled loudly before charging at, at Eric, causing the incubus to step back in silent shock. Malix pointed his gun at Eric, closing the distance between, between them, and fired it as the barrel almost reached Eric's face. Instead of the bullet ripping into Eric, a large explosion forced both Away from each other, Malik bounced off the far wall and landed on his knees, groaning in pain. Eric, however, slid across the ground, landing on his stomach. Wow. Eric! Malik slowly planted a foot into the ground to stand, but froze before doing so. Staring at Eric's body, Eric, on the other hand, slowly rose and turned to face Malik's head on. Eric reached a hand up and wiped off a small stain of blood that had painted the side of his lip before growling almost anim animalistically. At that moment, something in the air changed. The air instantly went from frantic to still in energy, what could have been described in tone as the color red Color red quickly turned into a deadly mix of purple and red as everything began to blend together all at once. How persistent. I guess I'll have to go all out on you to finally rid the world of you. When they go to being like 
demons and all that. They their voice the way their voices sound different. Oh my god, I actually like how their voices sound. Oh god. Was that what was this the extent of demon of demon power? My eyes never strained from, from Eric's face, however, even as it changed, his eyes began to glow a bright golden color as Eric began to walk towards Malik. Let's end this. Malik aimed his gun and fired at Eric, but the bullet never made its target. As the shot erupted from the barrel, the ethereal tendrils erupted from Eric's back, creating a wing-like barrier from the, from the bullet. Malik stared, eye, Malik stared wide-eyed as Eric's tendrils absorbed the bullet and grew almost larger in size and in number with, with each step Eric took. Eric's skin slowly began to morph and shift, change, shift, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> shift, changing from human to something else entirely. Something about Eric grew dark and meant menacing and this transformation was making them even darker before i was allowed to see eric's new form however a pair of hands quickly covered my eyes instinctively i reached up and gripped them trying to pull them off a voice stopped me it's me don't look hi damien i listened carefully and let the last two words linger in my mind don't look why? What was being hidden from me? I wanted to know, but something told me to obey Damien's command. I could hear everything, however, I listened as Malik stood up with a paint grunt before I can't pronounce that word pushed against being behind I can't pronounce against the wall with another shell after that after that came sounds of flesh ripping and blood spurting flooded followed quickly by Malik's screams. Maybe it was better that I wasn't able to see. Eric, enough! Almost instantly after James's command, the sound stopped. The air grew silent as a pair of footsteps slowly made their way to where we were. I just had to be sure he was dead. No use in letting him have a chance to revive. You're getting sloppy, Eric. You've lost your glamour spell. Glamour spell? What does he mean? Why did Eric sound so different? Why was he... Why was this being hidden from me? It's a spell that makes us look human. I froze. Look human? They didn't look like humans after all. What did they look like? Like demons. As if Matthew knew what Damien was talking about, Matthew spoke up and followed followed the, by the sound of a cork popping out of a bottle. Well, not for much longer. Here. Ah, uh, there we are. Thank you, Matthew. I could hear the small clinking of glass being... Passed before hearing Eric guzzle down a liquid of some sort, the feel of the air around me gently began to warm up, warm back up, insinuating that everything had been returned to normal. Finally, Damien, da blah blah blah. Yeah, I said it right. Damien moved his hands from my eyes, allowing me to see around me once again. The devils, including Eris, had fled. On top of that, I assumed. To me, Malik's body was dirty sheet that was quickly turning red from blood. I couldn't tell if it was even his body. It seemed, it seemed lumped together like a pile of parts. The boys, however, had gathered around me, all, all of them, including Eric, like nothing had happened. What just... I tried to speak, but everything zipped around in my head at the whole event, and I felt like speaking wasn't even possible. Let's just get you home, miss. There's nothing more to see here. I could only la la blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> I could only nod. What had happened boggled in my 
mind to the point of disbelief. I was second guessing everything, lost in a sea of what and how and when. As we walked out of the warehouse, I looked at Eric for some form of sign that I wasn't dreaming. Eric smiled softly at me before looking ahead, trying to look like nothing had happened. It was over. Malik's was gone and the boys were finally safe. A wave of relief ran through my body at the thought of the of the, of the blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. I can't speak. A wave of relief ran through my body at the thought of never having to deal with that group again, until we have to deal with Diana later. At the same time, a pang of realization hit the back of my mind. The boys were only going to stay until after Malice was defeated. That was our deal. As we approached home, I could feel something heavy weighed down my heart. It was late, but the boys led me inside and turned on the lights to the lobby. Finally, we can relax. Yeah. Yeah, finally, you guys can relax. It will be good to have some rest without devils breathing down our necks. Ugh, I'm just tired. Can I hit the hay early? I think some sleep yeah. would be good for all of us. Hmm. I looked at Damien knowing he could read my mind and frowned. I didn't want him to know about my thoughts on the situation. Yeah, Ben sounds good. I wanted to just end tonight. Too much had happened and I felt dizzy just trying to figure it out. However, Damien spoke up stopping all of us from moving. Should we be gone in the morning? No, I want you guys to stay. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? <laughs> oh god, why did I say it like that? <laughs> the air became still with tension. The realization of the situation hit the boys like a wave, forcing them to turn to me in curiosity. They had remembered their deal and were now awaiting me to decide their fate. I gulped face to face with the reality of the situation the boys were leaving it up to me. They looked like they were willing to accept whatever I had demanded. It was only fair though after all that had happened. Hey Eric. I looked at Eric feeling my heart flutter in my chest. I didn't want him to leave but would he ask to stay? Sorry if you heard that. I hoped that he would say no and ask me to stay longer. As if he knew what I wanted, Eric moved and stepped to me gently, moving a strand of hair from my face to behind my ear. He stared into my eyes and spoke gently, stroking my cheek. Princess. You've been such a wonderful help to us already. But I'm afraid that I must ask more of you. I've grown fond of being here and of serving you. Would you allow us to stay? Aww. My heart skipped while a large red blush ran across my cheeks. The boy stared at Eric wide-eyed, but didn't dare to speak out. Eric stepped back to give me space, returning to where he was. I moved my gaze across each boy, trying to make a decision. If they left in the morning, I would never see them again, and my life could return to normal if I did decide to let them go. That would have been for the best. No goodbyes, no delays. But did I want to? They had done so much for me in such a small small amount of time. I wanted them to stay. I wanted Eric to stay. I merely smiled, staring at the man that had come to have feelings for the worst before speaking at last. I would love it if you could all if you all could stay. The boys cheered tirely, but nonetheless enthusiastically. I giggled at the sight. It was cute to see everyone so excited despite the tiredness that ran equally through our bodies. Today was a rough day. My home is your home as long as you can still help with the chores. The boys nodded in unison, agreeing to the terms I had set for them. Despite the good situation, I felt myself slowly slipping into unconsciousness. However, James quickly clapped his hands together, getting everyone's attention and waking me up, making sure I didn't pass out on the floor. All right, everyone. We're all very tired, so let's head to bed, shall we? Excuse me. 
Oh, yeah, sleep is actually a thing. Right. We've had a yeah. very long day, but it will be good to just relax tonight and tomorrow. Sleep sounds really good right now. Yeah, man. I watched a very happy smile grow onto Eric's lip, and he shared my excitement knowing that we would be together longer. He knew how long... Who knew how long we would be? We would stay together? All I cared about was that I would be with him. The others quickly left to finally rest, leaving me and Eric alone at last. My heart fluttered a bit as Eric walked close to me, gently wrapping his arms around my waist. I placed my hands onto his shoulders, leaning close. Yet again, you spoil me. I'm very unworthy of you, princess. <laughs> Hush, Eric, I wanted you to stay. I stared up in his eyes, getting lost in them. I didn't know if it was the tiredness or my growing attachment to him, but I felt myself lean into Eric's body and inviting me to stay while making me forget that my bed was also calling for me. Listen, about what happened at the warehouse. No, it's fine. You did what you had to do. I, I understand. I had accepted everything while in Eric's warmth. He was real, and he was something I didn't want to be without, even if that meant not not that ah uh, 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 uh. <laughs> even if that meant nodding against my curiosity besides, I was too tired to explore that memory further. Eric nodded before kissing my forehead sweetly. Come, let's get you to bed, oh. I nodded before Eric gently lifted me up into his arms like a bride and carried me to my room. I didn't want to leave his arms, leaning my head against Eric's chest, but, event but eventually I was slowly lowered to my bed covered with my cord covered with my bed covers. <coughs> Give me. <coughs> I was still in my school clothes, but I was too tired to strip or care. I looked to Eric, fighting a yawn from escaping me as he gently ran a hand over my hair. Have a good night, princess. I'll prepare breakfast for you in the morning. And then we're about to meet Diana. I nodded with a tired smile before watching him slowly stand and leave my room, closing the door. A wave of happiness washed over me as I laid in bed. I made I made a good choice. Sure, it would be hard, but I could tell that I would be able to manage it. Hop around the house and being with the man who I was slowly starting to fall for would be worth it. I slowly felt my exhaustion take over. I let, I let sleep consume me as I drifted into the darkness in my mind. Everything was special. I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> you are an interesting creature. Michaela, just know that I love your laugh. The way you do the left for Diana, I love it. All right, let's skip Diana dialogue. I just wanted to hear the way she laughed. Now, let's just. I do love her outfit. Have a good. All right, let's get to the boys and tell good morning, them miss. that Did Diana is well? here. I did until Diana showed up. <laughs> Before I could lie, hiding the in incident in the back of my mind, Damien furrowed his, forward, furrowed his eyebrows and stopping and stopped eating. She's here. The boys looked at Damien in confusion while I cursed his ability silently in my mouth. Um, Damien, what's up with you? Of course she's here. She kind of owns the house. Not that, Matthew. Damien looked to me wanting me to explain for him. However, the threats that Diana gave me last night warned me to keep my mouth shut. Diana. Damien pressed his lips together and to a fine line, the other boys looked at me with a raised eyebrow. A girl named Diana came by last night. Diana? Is she important? Did she try to hurt you? She's a succubus. 
That simple word, 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 world, what? <laughs> that single word made the boys stop and stare at me. I looked to each boy, unsure of what was going, to, what was going on through their minds. Should I have avoided it? So, she's come to try and bring us back. She must really be desperate. Well, what should we do now? Nothing. Well, She'll give up eventually. Will she, though? Will she? Yeah. I'm not so sure about that. The boys continued to look at me as if I knew the answer to that question. Damn it, Damien! She said that if I told you, she'd make my life a living hell. She can't possibly do that, right? She's not a devil. No, she isn't. However, she is a very powerful demon. Hmm. She's a master of mind manipulation and has been trained in illusion. Unlike other demons who use strength to get power, she uses her charisma. Ah. She has the power to make armies bow to her and obey her every whim. That's why she's so obsessed with us. Well, what do you mean? Well, she sort of has family ties to us. She was promised to marry one of us in exchange for more power. Hmm. She's just some whacked up hussy who doesn't know how to close her legs. She's not a real threat. Oh boy. Oh really? I feel insulted. <clears throat> Hit me. The boys and I looked around the room wondering where the voice came from. I felt cold sweat run down the back of my neck in fear remembering what kind of power she had. At last we saw Diana by the entrance, 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 I can't talk, I can't speak English, entrance of the kitchen, juggling a single red apple in her hand as she leaned against the archway. The boys quickly surrounded me, glaring at the intruder. So, you took up a human name as well. Beautiful name, isn't it? Well, for a human name, anyway. Sometimes when I play this on my own, I need to see what happens if I don't warn them about Diana. I need- I want to know what the dialogue is if it- if I don't warn them first. I'm kind of curious on that. When I play this on my own, I'll try to figure that out. What the hell do you want? To bring you back, of course. However, you weren't supposed to know that I was coming. I completely forgot about that little mind-reading ability. <laughs> My mistake. Diana pushed off from the archway and walked towards us, making the boy step closer to me in a protective circle. Diana laughed. My, my, my. What has the world come to? A group of demons protecting a human Excuse girl? Me. I'll tell you right now, she's not that pretty. And from what I can tell, she's still a virgin. Diana... My face grew red in complete anger and embarrassment. How dare she? Diana chuckled and smirked at me, knowing that I wanted to hit her, but had control of myself. Such control you have, human. You know your place very well. I didn't control the growl that escaped my throat, though. Well, will you all change your minds? I assure you, it's for the greater good. I expected the boys to say no. What I heard was complete silence. None of the boys replied to Diana, which made me both nervous and fearful as to why. Diana leaned her head back a bit, surprised for a different reason. No. Well, I see. Was silence truly them saying no to her? I looked around at the boys and saw the disobedience in their eyes, giving me my answer. My heart, I felt my heart flutter, especially when my eyes landed on Eric. He kept close to me, glaring daggers into Diana. I could feel that he was completely adamant in his choice to stay. I didn't know what, but I was <laughs> I didn't know what, but I was incredibly happy to know he wanted to stay. Aww. Diana sighed and pressed her finger into her temple, 
Rowena gently. Either all of you are playing a very convincing hard-to-get game, or you all must be out of your minds. Hmm. They're not leaving, Diana, so deal with it. Diana then looked at me, locking her eyes within mine, as if to read me. I could tell she wanted to do something, but the boys would stop her, so the stare was their only available a action. After a small moment of silence, Diana licked her lips before breaking the gaze battle and smiling to the boys around me. Very well. I guess I'll take my leave now. Mm-hmm. What? Her leave? Was she serious? The boys around me strained up and grew confused looks on their faces as Diana stepped back and away from us with a small bow flaunting her cleavage. Okay. <laughs> Without another word, a deep purple pentagram appeared under her feet and Diana's body slowly sank into the floor. As her head vanished into the floor, the pentagram vanished. At once, the boys relaxed and slowly began to return to their spots at the table, each in deep thought. She'll be back, but she won't kill us. She needs us alive. <sighs> Whatever. We'll just keep saying no. She can't force us to come back. She can't do anything but annoy us. Eventually, she'll give up. That's the hope, anyway. Hopefully. Eric, walk Eric walked over to me and gently caressed my cheek, looking at me with concern. She won't harm you, princess. I promise. Aww. I nodded, feeling that he was telling the truth, or at least that a hopeful and comforting thought. Eric gently... When he took my hand in his and kissed my knuckles, however, making me blush and forget what I was thinking about. Aww. The sound of collective chuckles and playful snickers whispered through the air, making me blush even more. But as Eric cleared his throat, the laughter stopped. I looked up to see he was glaring at his brothers with his lips on my hand. He and I pulled away from each other just as the sound of Naomi's car appeared. I quickly ate my food and waved to the boys and left, confident that nothing was going to happen. For now. Alright, and then we're going to see Diana at our school. And then we're going to hear about the... The boys, and their life of the demon world. Alright, now we're You're here. Awake, prince. You're awake, princess. That's a relief. <sighs> How do you feel? Better. Eric nodded before he gently reached over and placed his hand over mine, running his thumb over my knuckles and examining my face with a soft, with soft sadness. I must apologize, princess. To see you be hunted by both demons and devils, I feel entirely responsible. Eric? Eric, it's not your fault. No. Forgive me, but I can't stand the thought of them hurting you. If we had never come, you'd never be in danger. I quickly reached over and put my finger on his lips, stopping him from going any further. I didn't want to hear any more. Eric, it's okay. I wanted to help you out. I offered to let you all stay. Nothing is your fault. I gently moved my hand and cupped Eric's cheek, staring at him with concern. I didn't want him to hold any guilt in his mind about this whole ordeal. Diana was desperate and she'd hunt anyone for them. I w it wasn't his fault. She was desperate enough to hunt them down. However, I was curious. So, Eric, you're a noble? Eric chuckled before he stared at the hand at the hand he was caressing with a soft smile. Yes, I'm a noble. My brothers and I are nobles. Well, I guess I should say were now, shouldn't I? Were? James was the demon prince when we lived in the Abyssal Plains. The others and I were simply nobles living in the castle simply because of our bloodline. Hmm. Should James fail or die, we were the replacements. 
Well, we didn't want to live like that, as simply replacements over our brother. So we all wanted to leave and be an actual family. Aww. What was it like while you were there? Well, to put it simply, it was boring. James was constantly being trained while the rest of us had to constantly entertain ourselves without disturbing him. I, however, was also being trained under the guidance of my mother. Your mother? Yes, she was a lovely woman. I never knew what she looked like. That made no sense. How could he not know what his um, mother looked like? Eric as, Eric, as if he read my mind, smiled and chuckled at the confusion on my face. Our father had multiple wives. James, myself, Sam, and Matthew came from these very women. But tensions grew high when Damien was born outside our Excuse father's me. marriages. In order to quell the tension, our father had a powerful demon mage turn our mothers into simple floating spirits. Hmm. They lived, but they could not have physical form. Damn. That's horrible. It is, but which is better? A house where the sons of the demon lord could have their birth mothers, or watching these very women claw at each other's throats out of jealousy, leaving the sons with no true parental guidance. Our father didn't have time Aww. for anyone but James, so the rest of us needed someone to make sure we didn't grow up to be incompetent. Eric had a point that was horrid, but it was... A logical point, I bit my lip and nodded in understanding. Eric gently brought my hand up to kiss my knuckle. Would you like to see what I mean instead? I stared, trying to understand what he meant. However, as the memory of when he showed me the demon... I can't read words. However, as the memory of when he showed me the demon palace replaced... In my mind, I nodded and let my curiosity guide me. Eric smiled before simply holding out one hand to me and letting a small breath brush against his palm. Instantly, the flower Eric had given to me appeared in his hand, making him smirk to make me blush. You kept it. Good. Eric wrapped his fingers gingerly around the, the stem, giving it, giving it the magic it had been given before and casting an aura like mirror before me. I peered in to see the castle main hall once again. The memory of being in the hall I'll be, be I can't pronounce that word by magic sent a small shiver down my spine. I watched, however, as a very familiar demon walked in arm in arm with a woman with the with cat ears and they tailed down the walkway. Tiffy, my sweet kitten, you truly astound me. Whatever shall I do with you? <laughs> Stop it, you're making me blush. But what if I want to make you blush? You're so much cuter when you blush, kitten. <laughs> Stop! I felt my eye twitch in irritation. Why was Eric showing me this? Was he trying to spite me? I didn't want to see him flirt with demon girls. I already had some trouble with him flirting with me. <laughs> you sly incubus, you. I'll get in trouble for sure if I'm caught with you. Then shouldn't we make the risk worthwhile? Eric held the, the cat girl close to his body, looking about all ready to kiss her. The girl, however, mewed and pulled away, giggling in almost cute embarrassment. <laughs> Such a bad incubus. So bad. I should go. Ah. Very well, you minx. <laughs> Until we Eric. meet again. <laughs> the cat girl giggled before rushing out of the main hall, but... Not before Eric lowered his hand underneath her tail. She, she then turned and let it slide across 
his fingers as she ran off, making the cat girl jump in surprise. The girl playfully glared at Eric, who only pout pouted innocent lips in return before she exited. <laughs> However, as the girl left the room, Eric's face went from first tasted for blah 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 blah. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Flirtatious to almost ice cold, Eric let out a sigh, gently rubbing his hands to rid them of the fur that was caught on them and rolled his shoulders. Well, mother, was that enough to please you? Hmm. I stared in shock at the, at the personality change. What the heck happened to Eric? He was flirty, charming, and almost dis dis disgustingly... Come, God, but I can't read words. Complimentary, but the Eric was, but the Eric guy was seen in the mirror wasn't him at all. <coughs> Excuse me. A small red orb surrounded with the veil of a purple mist and turned the space, making my mind go blink. It approached Eric glowing as it spoke. Very well done, dear. Much better than I expected of you. Thank you. You taught me well. That I did. You must never forget, however, to always listen to your women. Serving them is your number one priority. Should they be uncomfortable, you must step back and be as submissive as possible. Yes, mother. All right. Good. Now, continue to woo that cat girl. Once she gives you her energy, then you can toss her back out. You don't need any pets hanging around when you find another girl. As you wish, mother. Hmm. I stared in utter shock. The orb vanished, but Eric remained in the hall, letting out a sigh. He had to... He had a look of displeasure on his face. He looked tired as well, but something seemed off. He looked like he has a lot on his mind, but his closed mouth wouldn't let him speak then. He was submissive in to his guidance. Eric. I turned away from the mirror to look at Eric. To look at the Eric beside me, who had a look of both sadness and guilt, it was as it was and as like a puppy admitting to chewing at my favorite shoe or a child stealing a cookie from the cookie jar. Eric stopped the magic, rolling the mirror out of existence and letting it fade away to the air before he looked to me. She taught me well, at least what she could teach me anyway. That visage became habit, and now it's a natural persona to me. She taught Aww. me to always serve and make the women I met happy. She always said that that was the true Incubus way. Aww. The true Incubus way? It makes sense, no? If I can please and serve any women I meet, then I can surely convince them to fully give their energy to me. I began to see the mask Eric was wearing. He wasn't putting on airs because he was overly confident. He was complimentary in order to gain trust and respect. This is smart. It is. That is smart. However, I know what you're thinking, princess. I don't blame you for thinking what you are thinking of right now. Then what am I thinking of right now? Who am I exactly? If I am truly not as flirtatious as I act, then what do I act like? And will you be the next victim? I can assure you, princess. That I am no danger to you. Eric, how can I be so sure? Because, princess, I don't deserve your trust or energy. Aww. I stared. My mind was, my mind going blank. What did he mean? Eric lifted my hand again and gently caressed it, staring down at it. You've done so much for me and my brothers. Sheltering us? Letting us continue to live here. It may not seem like much, but to a family of brothers without anywhere to go, it means everything. Mm -hmm. 
I can't soil your gifts to us by taking anything from you. You've become so important and precious to us. To me. To take anything from you like that would be beyond unforgivable. I was in speechless silence as Eric lifted my hand higher and simply laid his lips against it. I could feel his frown and felt his shame burning itself into my skin. It was pitiful sight and almost made my eyes water. I could never do that to you. Eric lowered, blah, blah. Eric lowered my hand and lowered his head. The shame. I couldn't help but feel my heart squeeze within my chest at the sight. He didn't want to hurt me. Eric. He truly cared. Eric let out a small sigh before looking to me. His face now clear of the flirtatious mask he wore for so long. He had a genuine caring and loving smile bared for me. That was... This was the man inside of the incubus who cared for me and wanted to be revealed. Now, princess, you must get some more rest. You weren't fully recovered, and dinner is a good scent to wake up to. <laughs> Eric smiled and gently pressed me back onto the bed. I couldn't let him leave without doing something. I quickly pulled Eric down to me. I lifted my head and gently kissed him softly, laying a hand on his cheek to keep his face closed. Eric stared in deep surprise before hesitantly kissing me back, caressing my cheek and slightly melting at the touch of our lips. Aww. <laughs> a soft sigh escaped his lips before he slowly pulled away with a smile. He gently licked his lips, making me go red in the face. At the simple gesture, he let out a satisfied hum before nuzzling my forehead. Sleep. <laughs> and with that, he stood up and left the room, leaving me to rest as per his request. I smiled to myself before relaxing to the mattress. <laughs> God damn it, Diana. I suddenly tensed up. I felt majorly uneasy. Something wasn't right. I felt it in my core. She must be here. Yeah, she is. She's trying to take Eric from us. The thought of her in the house infuriated me beyond belief. I had to make sure she was not here. I rolled out of, I rolled out of bed and quickly left the room, wandering the halls and instantly, and and it's blah blah blah, <laughs> and listening closely. She was a demon, but I was listening very in intently. There was no way she would have been able to sneak up on me. <coughs> Excuse me. I know you're here. Where are you? I could feel myself growl. It wasn't a matter of fear that she'd take away from the boys anymore. Her very existence had lit a fire of rage within my gut, which only grew as each day went by. This feud was getting on my nerves, and I knew it would not end well for one of us. It wasn't... I wasn't going to lose to that demon. Diana, what a pleasant surprise. Oh, boy. My heart stopped. Di Diana was it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I can't speak. My heart stopped. Diana was with Eric. My mind Flutes into slow motion, playing fake images of Diana trying to seduce Eric in my head to further fan the anger flame inside of me. What was even worse was the fact that Eric could play into Diana's flirtatious game. I instinctively followed Eric's voice and blushed wildly. I was approaching to the bathroom. The door was open, just a crack wide enough to peek in without being noticed. <sighs> I peeked inside to see Eric by the bathtub with Diana sitting on the sink looking to him. <laughs> Such a gentleman. You know how to treat a woman. That I do. However, I'm afraid that my manners will not replace my sickening hatred towards you. Uh, I'm hurt. Uh, wounded, truly. Sorry, Diana. Is this how you really address a woman? A woman you may be. But you are an enemy as well. Hmm. Pity. And here I thought I was going to offer you the chance to become something better than just a simple incubus. That's not gonna happen. 
What was Diana going on about more than just an incubus? She was insane. I highly doubt you have anything more than what I can have here in the human world. How about becoming the next demon lord? God damn it, Diana. I froze. What did she mean, becoming the next demon lord? The boys... <coughs> the boys weren't in the demon world anymore. They had no claim to the throne anymore. Becoming the next demon lord? You're overstepping yourself, don't you think? How can you know about who the throne goes to? Well, currently, I'm the contracted bride to the heir to the throne. Since the throne is open, it's available to any son of the Demon Lord's line. Is that so? It God, is. Diana, I You'll swear. You'll the throne, the land, and a bride to continue your lineage with. Doesn't that sound like a perfect life for an incubus like you? I could feel myself gripping my fist tightly in anger. How dare this girl try to convince Eric to return to the demon world? He ran away from it. He didn't have to go back. He shouldn't go back. <sighs> my mind began to wander, imagining him saying yes. He would leave and the brothers would follow to bring him back. They'd be trapped because of... Because Diana would make sure they would never leave. Eric would be the new demon lord and Diana as his queen. I'd lose him. Sorry, but that actually doesn't sound appeasing at all. <laughs> what? Did you not hear him, Diana? I felt surprise run down my body again. Did I hear Eric correctly? He denied her. You dare deny. Oh, boy. Do not try to raise a tone to me. I am not as submissive as my training defines. Jeez, he sure told you, Diana. Ha! <laughs> why did you say it like that? I don't know why I said it like that. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, Diana, I can't. <laughs> I can see the S or S. Hi, gamer. Thank you for the raid. I can see the ethereal ten 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 tendrils ten I can't I don't know if I pronounced that right. <laughs> tendrils slowly form around Eric, taunting and threatening to strike at Diana. You do not scare me. I can bring you to your knees and make you beg to return with me. Oh god, Diana Such a cute bluff. You don't have enough power to do that, do you? Or else you would have already done it. That's fair. Eric smirked before making the tendrils fade away. Diana gripped the smirk beneath her as Eric turned to adjust the shower head non shell shell blah, blah I can't say a word. <laughs> oh god. Besides, even if you did enthrall me, you wouldn't fully own me. I belong to her. That's right, Diana. <laughs> the human girl. You must be joking. A human like her can't possibly provide you what you need. She is a human. You're a demon. <sighs> I felt the urge to storm in and shut her mouth. It would give away my position, but I was... But, but, I was growing extremely tired of Diana. Set her straight. Haha. <laughs> I decided to be assertive and quickly stepped into the room, throwing the door to the bathroom wide open. Diana and Eric looked at me in surprise as I glared daggers at Diana. Get out! Well, well, little human. You're awfully nosy in business that doesn't concern you. Oh, bull. It does concern me. Does it? I don't think a human would understand the importance of this affair. Affair? You're asking him to live to be someone he doesn't want to be. That's not going to happen. Oh? And what makes you so sure about that? Because I love him, that's why. <laughs> Diana stared and shocked at my exclamation. Was it not what she expected? I didn't care. What? I didn't care what she expected. I wasn't going to lose to the man I had grown to love. You... love him? Did you not hear me, Diana? Yes, I love him. Oh, look at Eric's face. Aw. Diana's lips twitched, the edges curling into an amused smirk as she stared at me. So what? A human's love isn't enough to understand the situation. A demon can never reciprocate human feeling. Or so you thought. 
To both of our surprises, however, Eric stepped forward and put an arm around me, pulling me close to his body. I love her. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I saw the confidence Diana had shattered in her eyes as she stared at Eric at his words. I could see the struggle in her eyes to try to find some weakness in Eric, in me, anything. A demon love a human. Impossible. Impossible? How utterly dim to think that. We are the masters of emotion. <laughs> we aren't barred away from feeling love. In uh... fact, we can experience it ten times more powerfully than humans. Oh, Eric. I love her with every single part of my being. However, I don't expect someone like you to understand oh, love. Oh, damn. Diana took a step back, physically feeling the sting of Eric's words in her chest. She had lost. I could see it in her eyes. Diana's eyes grew, grew dull as she glared at me and Eric. It seemed almost uncharacteristic of her, yet it was something I wasn't surprised to come from her face. Very well. Fine. Vale. Bye, Diana. And with that, Diana faded into the ground into a purple pentagram. Crossing her arms and looking upset. Eric and I were then left alone, left with the silence of the room. <sighs> I finally let out the air I was unconsciously holding in my chest, relaxing from the ordeal. Eric stepped to me and held me gently, surprising me. Aww. Are you okay, princess? Yeah. I nodded in response, unable to speak so immediately. After being surprised, Eric let out a sigh. Relaxing in the embrace, I gently placed my hands around him, returning the embrace slightly. Aww. I could hear Eric's heartbeat. He held me close in his arms, and I felt safe beyond words. My sweet princess, how you've captured my heart. Aww. I looked up at Eric one Wondering what he meant by what he said, Eric smiled down at me, moving a strand of hair from my face to look down at me. I'm selfish, ignorant, and undeserving of everything you have done and given to me. The way you accept me and see through my mask astounds me beyond words. And now, you've captured my heart, and claimed it as yours to probably the greatest adversary in the Abyssal Plains. My god, Eric, I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. Oh, there we go. You've made a demon fall in love with you. I've fallen in love with you and want to give you everything you deserve. Aww. I stared wide-eyed, blushing like a maniac. Was this real? No way. This kind of girl was Eric confessing to me, confessing his love for me? Eric gently smiled and caressed my cheek. The warmth of his hand invited me to nuzzle into it. I closed my eyes. This wasn't a dream. My heart was pounding hard enough where I was sure Eric could hear it. Eric leaned in, closing his eyes. He stopped, however, remaining just a mere inch away from my lips. He wanted me to show my feelings for him. He had left himself open for me to kiss him or leave him empty. The power I had was unbelievable. Kiss. I loved him and wanted to give him exactly what he wanted. I gently leaned in, letting my lips finally touch his gingerly. Eric let out almost a pleasured purr against my lips before wrapping both of his arms around my waist. Blah, blah, blah. <coughs> his arms around my waist. Pulling me close to him, I moved my arms and around his neck, feeling the kiss between us deepen into a heated height. My chest was pounding, making me feel making me feel and see fireworks and fireworks in my mind. Eric was everything I desired. He was the man I wanted, demon or not. It was also supernatural to fall in love with someone so quickly. Maybe it was the sense magic I was thrown into, or maybe it was Cupid playing with my heart. Either way, I found myself melting at the thought of him being with me. I found myself combing my fingers through Eric's hair, making the man holding me softly tremble at my touch. He gently nibbled on my lo lower lip, asking me to deepen the kiss between us even further. I easily teased him before finally opening my mouth slightly for him. 
His tongue gently danced with mine as one of his hands slid up my back and cradled my head. He gently leaned my body back, making me cling to him as the heat of our kiss rose higher and higher. Gently, though, Eric slowed the kiss down and pulled away, staring down at me, his eyes burned for me, wanting me to melt and buckle in his arms. I could feel myself melt already. Eric, uh, Eric opened his mouth to speak, but as a very small blush ran <laughs> along his cheeks, he was reduced to shy silence. I stared as he tried to find the words to say in my eyes. I knew exactly what he wanted. He didn't need energy, though, right? Are you... No, I just... Aww. I stared wide-eyed, feeling a blush on my cheeks grow. He didn't say anything more, but I knew that, but I, but I knew what words would have followed if he continued. He wanted me. I was stunned. Was I that appealing to him? Was he pas Was his passion really that deep for me? Eric gently nuzzled my forehead, losing the blush, and finally being it able to speak, a small chuckle escaping his lips. If you don't want to, we don't have to. I do have to shower after all, and you need your rest. Aww. If you don't want to, we don't... I could feel my mind go numb and purr at the idea, a moment with an incubus. He was a demon of sex, the purest form of lust and desire. My world would rock and I would enjoy every second of it. At the same time, I was indeed inexperienced. Diana wasn't wrong when she claimed me to be innocent. Did I want to give that innocence to him, especially this early? I found myself forgetting the words yes and no. What could I say to him? I knew then what I wanted, but, what, but how to say it without breaking the moment? I couldn't believe the two words that came out of my mouth and made the most sense to tell him yes. I needed him. I wanted him. Those two words must have made something in him finally break. Eric simply ran his fingers down his vest and shirt, releasing the buttons and revealing his bare chest to me. I couldn't help but move one of my hands down his chest, running my fingers over the crevices of his mus muscles. A pleasure purr escaped his throat, making me shiver slightly. Eric let his vest and shirt slide down his arms onto the floor. Before cradling my head in his hands, kissing me deeply, I felt heat rise in my body, making me undo the tie underneath my collar and release the, release the buttons on my own shirt. I would join him for his shower, then we'd head to bed together. Quickly, I removed my shirt and vest, making Eric stop kissing me and stare slightly in surprise. I was simply in a bra, but I could feel a flush evade my cheeks. <laughs> my, shy, my shy side began to fester in my mind. Did I really want this to undress before a demon? No. This was the man I loved, and yet I felt my innocence drape over for me an almost shame. As if he knew, Eric gently caressed my cheek, smiling at me before kissing each cheek and whispering in my ear. You're beautiful. Aww. Those two words broke my limitation. I gave in. I... You... You... I can't pronounce that word to my desires. Before I knew it, he... <coughs> He and I were both stripped of clothing and in very nice warm shower together. The heat be between our bodies simply added to the warmth, making the shower a very steamy one. Eric pulled me close, knowing I was still shy, and began to kiss my, my lips over and over. Each kiss was his promise to keep me safe, keep me comfortable, and love me. I kept my arms wrapped around Eric, taking each kiss and gave, and he gave and giving him my own kisses in return. I didn't know if it was the fact that we were both naked or maybe I was I just craved his touch, but I didn't want to let him go. The water ran over our bodies, cleansing our skins as we held it to each other like it was the end of the world. Even when Eric started to act 
actually washes body and mind. Our body is constantly touched. The fragrance of the soap engraved itself into my memory as I let him touch me and clean me. He was gentle and sweet, making sure to be attentive to every part of me. However, as he held me, I could slightly feel the shiver of his hands. He was, he was nervous. Was I his first? Aww. He wasn't going to show it. He wanted me to enjoy this moment, but was afraid of screwing up. Shivering, his shivering hands showed me his emotions perfectly. Then my mind quickly made a realization where were we really going to join in the in the shower? I had imagined my first to be in a bed. I eventually pulled away from him with the last bit of soap was risen away from my skin. He looked to me worried, but I smiled. Not here. Eric stared for a brief moment before slightly smirking and nodding, gathering me back to his arms and kissed me. I felt warm magic gather around our bodies as the slight pattern of the running rather vanished. I slightly opened my eyes to see that Eric and I were no longer in the shower, but in my bedroom. We were both dry, but the heat and passion remained. Eric guided me to the bed, and as a purple tendril made sure my door was closed and locked. As he laid me down and knelt, me, knelt over me, Eric smiled and finally embraced me as we both desired. The pleasure between us would be heavenly, and we'd go through it together. I closed my eyes and gave myself to Eric. My body, my mind, my soul, it all belonged to him as he held me. His body, his mind, his soul, it all belonged to me as I gave it into his embrace. His kisses and fingers over my skin would forever engrave themselves in my memory as our passion rose through incredible heights. Our breaths and moans to each other equally sounded and echoed like a blissful chant we never wished to end. We kept moving, loving, feeling each other every inch of our bodies until we had enough and I was in and I was enveloped in his embrace skin to skin heartbeats matching as we held each other in the glow of the aftermath I nuzzled my head under Eric's chin as he held me close I love you so much Aww, I love you too just to hear those words come from it Eric's mouth made my heart flutter to hear me answer made my soul warm and glee. I could feel both of us sink into a peaceful sleep together. It was the best sleep I had had in days, and I was happy. I had love, and I had ha my happiness. My life was simply perfect. When I opened my eyes, I found myself staring into Eric's bare chest. I blushed, but looked up to see Eric still sleeping. His sleeping face made me giggle softly, but the reality of the situation made my heart flutter. I couldn't believe it that I was lying next to a man I had grown to love with all of sorts my heart. With, with all of my heart. His warm embrace made me feel safe, and, the, and the, as the tender moment we just shared replayed in my head, I couldn't help but smile and snuggle into his chest further. Unconsciously, he held me tighter to his body, giving me more of his warmth. <clears throat> I didn't want to move, but then my core suddenly tightened and made me sit up without waking the man next to me. I felt my legs move and bring me to my balcony window where I opened the glass and stepped out onto the patio. Hi, Diana. I stared wide-eyed at Diana, who sat, who sat cross-legged on the railing of my balcony with her glowing red eyes stare upon me. I opened my mouth up to object, Diane, but Diana stopped me. Before you get all huffy, I didn't come here to take your precious man away. By the way, how was it exactly? Demons are the best lovers, after all. Well, I'm gonna skip this. I and she wants to ask us about eternal happiness while, while we give her the boys, and I'm going to say no to that. Well, may
All right. <clears throat> the rest of the story can almost be passed over. With Diana gone, my life returned to normal. With school and my friends not remembering what had happened, it was as if magic never even appeared in my world. One thing was for certain, however, Eric loved me and I loved him just as much. We had promised our lives to each other and nothing was going to take that away from us, not even time itself. Our love was so powerful it practically overwhelmed me with joy every time I found him holding me close. Holding me every morning, ugh. <laughs> to think demon in love with human like me, it was unthinkable, unbelievable, it was practically impossible. But it was true. The other boys decided to leave of their of their own accord. They knew that my future would only need Eric at my side. So they each decided to start their own lives in the human world. Eric understood perfectly and vowed to serve me well, wishing his brothers the very best. Aww. Besides, Eric had someone new to care for now. His brothers didn't need to need needn't what blah, <laughs> need to worry about him now that he was caring for me. I felt bad as well, but for being close to Eric than the others. But they reassured me that I was okay and that they would remain nearby should I ever need them. I was happy for that. They made me promise, however, that I would love Eric for as long as we lived, that promise was instantly given. But what of my future? Well, that was kind of made for me. Before I graduated, James decided to step into the light of the Anderson Toys Company, and with the help of his demon powers and leadership charisma, he managed to influence not only the entire board, but my father as well into running C. To letting him run C for C A C E O that blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> for CEO. I was beyond shocked. How James managed to do all of that was beyond me. But when the vote was called, James had taken the over the company I was destined to have. He vowed to respect the wishes of the late CEO and help the company become an even grander company for a demon that was simple to make a company grand. My grandfather would have been proud to see how James helped it shine. I, I think he'd be proud. With the CEO position filled, my father had no choice but to let me decide my future good. Because her dad is a jerk. <laughs> Which made me happy beyond compare. No longer would I have the future scaring me into the corner. I can choose my life on my own. That being said, I was still scared of where the future was going to take me. What did I want to do? Did I want to help James or did I want to venture off on my own? Eric assured me that he would support me and help me through whatever I decided to do. Decided to do. I was grateful and would never forget that promise. I was happy and nothing could take me down from that half shake me down from that happiness. One evening, a good couple of years after the boys and I had le uh, left left left. After the boys and I had met, I had a moment to myself, so I wandered my house and took it all that had happened as if it was all a dream. The demons, the devils, the magic, it was all surreal to believe. It almost frightened me to think that it could all have been all a dream. But the warm feeling in my heart reminded me that it was all real. The demons, the magic, the, the love I had, all real. I smiled as I held my hand to my chest, re released... Re Relishing, relishing in the feelings, dancing within my soul. Eric, where are you? <laughs> I let out a happy sigh before looking up and seeing where I had wandered to. I was standing at the entrance to the back yard, the, and the door was slightly ajar. I peeked over to see Eric standing by the gazebo, looking at the moon in the sky. Aww. I slowly opened the door and exited the house, walking toward the man who held my heart. Hearing the grass beneath my feet, Eric turned his head and smiled at me. <laughs> Good evening, princess. Why, hello there, my prince. I smiled and blushed a bit, moving to stand to at Eric's side. What are you doing out here? Ah, uh, I'm merely making friends with the moon, my love. Okay. <laughs> I blushed deeper, hearing him call 
me his love made my heart skip a beat he chuckled most likely being able to see the blush through the darkness of the night i wanted to see the night sky the yard is one of the more perfect places to stargaze don't you agree yeah i agree i found myself staring up at the sky as well the stars all glimmered in the dark blue almost pitch black sky they all seemed to cast an end Trancing spell on my eyes, not letting me look away, not that I cared anyway. Eric gently wrapped an arm around my waist, pulling me close to him without breaking my stare at the sky. I don't deserve you, you know. Aww, Eric. I raised an eyebrow and looked to Eric, confused. What did he mean? Eric simply stared at the sky, holding me gently to him. You're much too wonderful to be loving a demon such as myself. As cliché as it may be, the beauty fell in love with a beast. Eric. A beast with an insatiable hunger for lust. You're not a beast. Don't say that. But you're not a beast, Eric. Don't say that. <laughs> Eric looked down at me in slight surprise. I turned my body to him and gently held his cheek in my hand, feeling her nestle gently into it and cradle it with his own hands. You're not a beast, nor you will you ever be. You're Eric, and you're the man I want to love for the rest of my life. Demon or not, I love you. Eric stared, looking lost at what to say at my words. It was all true, though. He had faults, sure, but who didn't? I enjoyed his company and adored every part of his personality. The mask he wore would slowly fade over time. Or maybe not. After all, his mask is part of who I fell in love with. Eric gently moved his hand and kissed my palm, closing his, closing his eyes and absorbing what I had said. He gently opened his eyes, partially staring past my hand. Sometimes I forget that you're human. You entrance me better than any demon could. You're truly unbelievable. Are you real or am I dreaming? You're not dreaming. Yes, Eric, I'm real. I'm right here. Eric finally looked at me, a look of desperate need in his eyes. You're not dreaming. I gently guided Eric's face down with my hand and kissed him softly, rem reminding him of my touch and re reaffirming my words. He stared at me as if his greatest wish had come true. I fought back a giggle at the sight. Eric gently pulled me to him facing me to hug forcing facing me to hug me to his facing him to hug me to his chest i nuzzled into eric's chest hearing his gentle heartbeat and memorizing its tempo you'll regret it i promise you you'll regret loving someone like me eric you underestimate me <laughs> eric chuckled softly the sound of his laughter sending Happy waves down my spine, and Eric smiled down at me and kissed the top of my head. My focus, however, traveled down to my hand, which had become gently held by Eric. His thumb grazed over my ring finger, where I could feel some veins of energy tingle on my skin. I watched as a around my ring finger, a small, fine, round red self around and wrapped itself around and tied itself into a lovely ring. The ring it held a beautiful purple flower with a red gem in the, in the middle glistening in the moonlight. Aww. I gasped before looking up to Eric who who's slightly smirked down at me. See? I'm taking advantage of you already. Eric! Eric gently moved his hand and cradled my neck, replacing the smirk on his face with a tender smile that made my heart skip a beat. I don't know what I did to deserve you, but I swear to love you till the end of days and beyond. You make me feel so complete. Aww. I can no longer imagine what I would do in life without you. Let me stay with you. I love you so much. I felt my heart going a million miles an hour. Was this truly happening? Yes, it was. I felt it. I knew it. I love that art style. Okay. <laughs> Out of pure happiness, I wrapped my arms around Eric and kissed him deeply. 
Eric stared before holding me to him and kissing deeply back. Deeply back. Pouring all of his love to me into that kiss, I did the same for him, not wanting to wake up if this was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, not wanting to ever let go of this man in my arms. There were no words that could describe the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high all at once. Here I was kissing the man that I would be with forever, under the beautiful moonlight of the night. I had gained the heart of a demon, no, of a man I loved. I vowed to cherish, to cherish him and, and love him for the remainder of my days and beyond. Could a demon love a human forever? I knew Eric would. And that was my happily ever after. Eric's kiss, R. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so the next, uh, so I'm going to actually end this stream here and the next, Guy we're gonna romance with this Damien and then we'll romance with Naomi, Suzu, and Andrew. So I'm going to see who I can raid and I'll see you guys in my next stream. Bye!